Hey everyone and welcome to the channel. So today we get to take a look at the 2024 Subaru Solterra. This is the Touring. It is a full EV, finish off in gray, and its MSRP is just over $53,000. So we are going to start off with what this EV is powered by. You do charge this from the driver's side, but underneath the hood, you will not find an engine, of course. This is the 72.8 kilowatt lithium ion battery. This is also paired with two electric motors. There's one at the front axle, one at the rear. It's paired to a single speed, pumping out 215 horsepower, 249 pound-feet of torque. That is sent through the all-wheel drive system, propelling this 4,400 pound SUV from zero to 60 in six and a half seconds. Top speed is 110 miles an hour, and it has a total range of 227 miles. Now, as we work our way to the exterior styling, you will notice that we have assimilation to a grill up front. There's the entire gloss black surround, and then instead of cutouts, this is a solid body colored accent. There's parking sensors, as well as the forward facing camera, and then all the cutouts are in the lower section of the bumper there, where there's also active grill shutters. Now, this does have LED headlights, DRLs, and turn signals. Fog lights are in the lower section. And then in the side, fender flares, there's actually a massive cutouts to provide better aerodynamics and airflow for this EV. Now this also has a set of 20 inch wheels with a nice two-tone and multi-spoke design. This does feature regenerative braking too. And then you'll notice the rest of the fender flares leads to the side skirt there with more plastic and then the rear fender arch. Now this also has power folding side mirrors with a camera and a turn signal, full moonroof up top, and more gloss black surrounding the window trim. Really nice lines that run down the side. And then you'll notice too in back, we have a very steeply raked rear glass along with a unique design for this integrated spoiler. Now the third brake light is up top. There's no wiper blade because of the rake that this has. That leads to the gloss black spoiler and then the LED taillights that have a nice design to them. There's a backup camera, all of the sensors, and then more plastic in that lower diffuser. And then you can use the button on the key fob, of course, or up underneath to open up this power lift gate where you actually have a good bit of space. There's a little bit of storage underneath the floor where the charger is currently being held. There's a cover here, Harman Kardon for the audio. You can even fold down the back seats too if you need a little bit more storage. So for an SUV, it's pretty practical. You still get a little bit of height even with the design of the rear end. Now you can also lock and unlock this from the back door handles where we have a, a nice door panel with the uh, piano black and some of the leather and other accents. And you'll notice too, the two-tone for this interior. It's a nice complement with the exterior color. Now there's storage pockets. These are heated seats. There's also auxiliaries and uh, climate vents. I have about a half inch or so above my head. So at five foot 10, it's pretty spacious in the back. You have the armrest with cup holders and a little bit of storage and then a nice view. We have the full panoramic sunroof so you can get some extra light to your backseat passengers. And then up front, very similar of course. However, there's the side mirror adjustments, memory seating controls, and then a little bit more storage. And let's start this up. We have that power button. And we'll take a look at this uniquely shaped steering wheel. It has a flat top and bottom design to it. A little bit of a small steering wheel, but we have paddle shifters on both sides. On this left side, there's Bluetooth as well as your volume. And then these controls are for the gauge cluster. So you can actually go through quite a bit of information on this left side here. You can look at your compass along with your adaptive cruise, look at your music, you have your trip information as well as all wheel drive and TPMS. Lots of standard safety features that you can scroll through and turn on and off. And then you have any messages and then you can hide that away and just look at your miles per hour and the power. Now on this right side, there's all of your cruise and adaptive cruise along with mode and tuning for the audio. You have your headlight adjustments with the lift gate release and then a pretty large dash. You might be able to put some items up here if you wanted to, but it's a, a very large dash. We have a really cool pattern too that runs around it. Now for this infotainment system, there's navigation. You have music and phone when your phone is paired. There's some trip information, and then you also have a lot of general settings to go through and configure as needed. So not a ton of info, but that is everything that you need for driving this every day. 
There's power and volume for your audio. This even has heated and ventilated seats along with the heated steering wheel and your climate adjustments are in the middle here, nicely laid out. There's two air vents underneath that. And then there's the e-brake with your auto hold. This allows you to do one pedal driving so you don't have to use the brake pedal necessarily. There's parallel parking, traction control, even a view button to go through this diagram just to give you another set of eyes before you start moving the vehicle. There's also a few different driving modes. There's power along with eco and then a normal setting. And then X mode allows you to go into snow and dirt or deep snow and mud. And then I believe that this is for setting your speed for off-road and using that setting there, which is nice to see. And then you also have your gear selector right in the middle. So push it down and to the left for reverse, push it down to the right for drive, and then park is located up front. Now there's a wireless charging pad underneath this lid here, and it is a little bit transparent, so you would be able to see your phone once it lights up. There's a lot of storage space down below with auxiliaries, cup holders in the middle with a an adjustable armrest there, a little bit of storage in the middle, and because you get the storage down below, there's no glove box. So that gives you that additional storage as needed. This also has the uh, camera system for the rear view mirror, which is nice. And then the dome lights and controls for that sunshade and sunroof. And then even with the design of that rear end, you can still see over both shoulders. And in the power mode again, here we go. And we're up to speed. Very, very quiet as you would expect from a vehicle like this. But now that we are behind the wheel, this is what it looks like from the driver's seat. I will say it's a bit interesting with the steering wheel design and where the gauge cluster is located. Very untraditional compared to other vehicles where the gauge cluster is about here and you can see it through the steering wheel. So if you have this in the wrong place and maybe that's the design element, they wanted to cut this down so you could actually see over to the gauge cluster. So if you have the steering wheel in the wrong spot, it will block your entire view of that gauge cluster. So I think that's probably why they have that design. I can clearly see everything right now. But with this interior, I think it's a really nice layout. It is interesting to see we have Toyota technology. Even the controls on the steering wheel are from Toyota. I do believe Toyota makes a full electric that is the exact same as this too. I can't remember the name of that, but you have two different options depending on which one that you would like but it's a nice interior, it's a nice layout, it's very quiet, something that would be a great daily driver for the city. You can just hop in and scoot from point A to point B. But for its price, I'd say it's, it's a little bit basic. You are spending money for the EV technology. That is still something that is kind of higher in prices right now. I'm sure at some point the EV technology will improve and hopefully become a little bit less expensive for what the vehicles are in today's market. But that's going to wrap it up for the 2024 Subaru Solterra. If you enjoyed today's video, give it a huge thumbs up, consider smashing that subscribe button so you don't miss out on our daily uploads. And I will see you all in the next video.